Okay, so let's get right into it. Nine things that turn off potential customers. Listen, um, very rarely will anybody talk about this. I can almost tell you, you can't find many articles or videos online that are going to actually address these issues because it doesn't necessarily help with subscription or fan base or any of that stuff. So, But I think it's so necessary if you're trying to be a professional entrepreneur or CEO, if you're really trying to scale yourself to the highest level, don't you want to kind of you know get all the weeds out of the way that's preventing you from having a bigger, stronger relationship with business people? This is one of the things I think it's going to be important to be thinking about. So, okay, nine things that turn off potential customers. Number one, Somebody who smokes cigarettes, okay? So let's talk about cigarettes. Why cigarettes? So this week, my father was in town from LA visiting again. We typically have a certain sushi joint that we go to that I like in Dallas. And so this time it was closed. So I took him to a new one. I looked online and I saw a spot about a half a mile away from my house that was eight, uh, four and a half star, 88 reviews, four and a half star. So I said, let's go to it. So we went to this place and I'm sitting there and the waiter comes. The waiter comes and he's standing a feet away from me getting ready to take the order. I'm sitting, he's over here, and I start smelling cigarette, heavy cigarette. Immediately, in my mind, I'm checked out. I'm never going to go to the sushi spot ever again. Now, you may say, Pat, you're judgmental for doing that. Not at all. I'm the customer. I'm buying. I want to go to a place that I buy that I feel good, and the service is good. Now, you may say, well, Pat, how do you know the service is bad? It's not about how I know the service is bad. The mind is an imaginative mind. So my mind immediately went to this. My mind went to, wow, man. He probably had a smoke break, and he probably smoked multiple cigarettes because he smells pretty strong on the cigarette side. And he's probably, I don't know if he's washed his hands. He may, he may have not had washed his hands. And he's going to go out there and carry my plate, and he's going to bring my plate, and I'm going to hold it. I'm going to smell the cigarettes. It's going to bother me. I can't eat the sushi. So in my mind, we stayed because nothing else was open. This was a memorial weekend. Nothing else was open. The bill ended up being $121. I eat sushi twice a week. The other sushi spot that I like to go to is four and a half miles away from my house. This is a half a mile from my house. Watch this. $121. Let's just say I just go there once a week. $121 times 52 weeks in a year. You know how much money that is? It's roughly $6,000 some dollars per year. Okay. $6,300 or something per year. If I go there for five years, five times $6,300, that's $31,000 they lost over a five-year period. If I go to sushi spots, I always take friends and family. So imagine the people that I take to introduce to the sushi spot, okay? That adds another $60,000. That's $100,000, $90,000 potentially. This restaurant owner lost that he doesn't know about. You see, if I own the restaurant... One of my first questions would be, do you smoke cigarettes? Because customers don't like smoking cigarettes. Their imagination goes to a whole different place. So number one is cigarettes. In sales, if somebody comes to my house and they want to sell me something, I smell the cigarettes, I'm automatically checked out because I can't wait for them to leave because I don't like the smell. And believe it or not, most people don't like the smell of cigarettes. I'm not trying to harp on this. I did a Facebook mentions a couple weeks ago and I brought this up. Somebody got very upset about the fact that I said cigarettes. But it's just the reality part of it. You lose a big chunk of business by smoking cigarettes if you're in the cell. Now, if your, your, your business is all purely call and nobody can smell it, thank God they can't smell the cigarettes over the phone. But if it's something you're touching people, you got to realize it's affecting your business. Number two, odor, hygiene. Let me explain what I mean by odor hygiene. Yellow teeth. Yellow teeth is a turnoff when someone's buying uh, something from you or doing, they're doing business with you. This is all if you are in the service or in the sales business or or you're in the sales world, or you know, business, or you're an entrepreneur, where your image matters a lot. Your entire image matters a lot, right? So odor, let's talk about odor. Yellow teeth. Yellow teeth is a byproduct of what? Uh, it's either alcohol, it's either coffee, or it's uh, cigarettes, right? So all those three cause yellow teeth, and it could be a part of you not brushing your teeth twice a day. It could be a part of you, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, it, it could be a part of you not doing teeth whitening. All those stuff could be a part of it. It's a turnoff in the world of business. Another part of odor is BO, body odor, right? Uh, the challenge with body odor is you will rarely know if you have body odor because you don't smell yourself. You've been with yourself for 25 years. You're not going to smell your own body odor. But generally, you know how everybody has a friend that's pretty honest with them or a relative or a brother or a sister or a family member? 
Ask that person. Don't ask the person that's afraid to tell you the truth. Ask the person that's pretty direct. Look what they'll tell you. Hey, do I, yeah, you smell a little bit. Okay, great. Right? Does that make sense? Now I know I need to adjust. So body odor. Shower twice a day. Once in the morning, once at night. Don't go to sleep without showering. Wake up in the morning with a shower. Just make sure your body odor is being... And if you're going to do body odor, maybe shower with something that has a decent scent. Uh, another one is excessive amount of cologne. Some people, you know, you go to a nightclub, everywhere it's cologne, 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 cologne. thinking girls like this. Gentlemen, cologne goes like this. Once here, boom, 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 boom. That's it. You don't need any more than that. When you do too much, you're overcompensating for something you are hiding. That's all part of BO, body odor and hygiene they can take care of. Next, uh, one of the turnoffs that why people, uh, you lose potential customers is small lies. When you're telling a presentation and you catch a lie here and a lie here, you lose me. I'm automatically not doing business with you because if you can tell me three, four, five lies in a row, you're probably going to give me a big lie as well, right? So I'm paying attention for things that are inconsistent with the presentation you're given. So it's, it's very important for you to not have any small lies being done in your world as you're doing business. Next one, number four, too pushy. If you're too pushy, people don't like too pushy salespeople because it reminds us of car salesmen or reminds us of certain whatever it is. Too, too pushy, I don't like. I'd rather have you take a little bit more effort than try to push me on buying something, which I'm going to cancel tomorrow anyways. So what's the real benefit of you pushing me buying something today, right? Then the complete opposite side is like right now people said, yeah, I'm not like that. This is why, you know, my customers love me. Yeah, but you're not closing that much. So your effort also doesn't work. Then there's the people that are way too soft. Okay, this is the first, fifth uh, turn off. Way too soft. Would you like this? Do you want to buy this? You want to give us a shot? What do you think about this? Is this okay? That's also a turn off because my feeling when I see that energy means you don't even believe in your own product. I want somebody that's assertive. So, John, is there any reason why we shouldn't do business together? Um, yeah, there is. I have a concern with this. Okay, tell me what are your thoughts on this area. Ba, 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 ba. Instead of, why don't you buy today? Why don't you buy it? Come on, man, let's buy it today. Come on, bro, let's buy it today. Come on, buy No, 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 no. Questions. And then there are people that are too soft and too, oh, you don't want to buy it today? Okay, sounds good. Well, thank you so much. You know, thank you. I don't want that either. I want you to make an effort to close me, right? But uh, I don't want you to be too pushy. I don't want you to be too soft. Number six. Look in somebody in the eyes. It's very important that somebody looks me in the eyes. People like it when someone's able to look at you in your eyes because they're not hiding anything. Here's what I do. Here's who I am. This is what I'm doing. I got nothing to hide. You want to do business? This is what we got going on. Great. It's a turnoff if you do one of these all the time. If you can't look at people in the eyes, and there are people that do this, how you feel about that? I don't feel good about it. Neither do people that want to do business with you. So when you're talking to somebody, how you doing, John? Pleasure meeting you. Boom. Look at them in the eyes. Okay. Next. Um, Delivering on promises. Let me explain what I mean by delivering on promises. If I do business with somebody and they tell me, oh, the moment I leave this place, I'm going to send you an email with a draft and all this other stuff, you should get it within the next 30 minutes. If I don't get that email, but I get it a day later and they use this sentence, you know, I got caught up yesterday. I had such a, and anything they give me is an excuse, anything. That person's probably not going to deliver on their promises. And they're thinking about this, okay? Oh, tomorrow I'm going to have my assistant call you and get all this stuff uh, started. I don't get a call tomorrow from my assistant. Don't bother calling me the next day. If you're a professional, have your assistant call me tomorrow and remind them and hold, oh, you know what, my assistant sometimes, you know, no, nope, it's not your assistant, it's you. You messed it up. You, by the way, these are mistakes that you make that somebody, a mentor points out to you and you gotta improve as well. I'm simply telling you on areas that you may be losing business that you need to get sharper in. Next, facade, authentic. When I'm trying to buy something from somebody and they're not being themselves, it's too much of, well, let me tell you who I am. Let me tell you, you know what I got. It's too much of a facade and it's not themselves. It's, t it's a turn off. It's, it's too fake. We don't like that. We don't want to do business with somebody like that. I had a guy that I did business with. I'm the best mechanic in Upland. Best mechanic in Upland. I had an issue with a S600 of mine. And I said, look, I'm selling a car next week, but it's got an issue with the check engine light. You got to fix it. He says, no problem. He goes, looks at it, comes like, oh, this is a 45, this is a major issue. You need a part that I can get, but it's only this guy. It's going to cost us $2,500 to get it. And he knew I'm selling it next week, right? He knew I'm selling it next week because it was a mechanic of a family member. So I said, no problem. I had no choice. So I had him do it, and I go get it, and I drive it back. The next day, the S600 gave me problems again. I took it to my local guy because Upland was an hour and a half away from me. 
He says, uh, uh, Patrick, I don't want to, is this person a relative? I said, it's somebody that my family, you know, introduced me to. He says, I hate to, you know, come in between you and your friend, but I just want you to look at this real quick. So I'm going to look at it. He did the whole shimmy job. You know what I'm talking about with the, and tied it up. And I, and I called him. I said, look at this. What'd you do here? I mean, this is a family introduced me to you. What type of a business person are you? Is this how you do business? How could you, how dare you tell me? I, I said, this is the second day. This gave me problems. There's nothing that's been changed. Tell me what you changed. And he said this. I said, that's not been changed. I had the mechanic talk and he hung up. And I was a mechanic that was used. That's not transparency. That was a facade. That was an act. He lost my business and many people's business around us simply because he tried to get fast money and abuse the customer. And then the last one I'll tell you, some people have a hard time explaining this part, but I'm going to try to do my best to explain it in a way that hopefully will make sense to you. You know, sometimes, um, I was on Facebook mentions this past Sunday night. I normally do mentions on Sunday night at 10 o'clock Central Standard Time, 8 o'clock Pacific, 11 o'clock Eastern, and we have hundreds of people that join us on Sunday night. And um, one of the guys asked me a question, he says, Pat, how much does weight have to do with me being successful? And I said, wait, with you having to be successful? He said, yeah, wait. I said, okay, it's a great question. It's a bold, it's a tough question because I'm going to give you my honest opinion. He says, tell me. I said, look, whenever I am buying something from somebody who is dramatically out of shape, I'm not talking about 10% above your body weight that your body can carry. If your body weight can carry 150 pounds, you're at 160 pounds, okay, I get it. 165, I get it. But if your body can only carry 150 and you're 230 pounds, you lack discipline. Now, I know today's world in America is so sensitive, so sensitive that people are very quick to uh, post a message on the bottom and saying, shame on you, it's offensive, you're an insensitive, you know, ta, 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 all this other stuff, and you don't care about people, all you care about is business. No. I watch people who are extremely overweight, and I've had dinner with them, and I watch their habits. Two cheesecakes... All this bread, all this heavy stuff at 8 o'clock at night. What are you doing having two cheesecake? You can't afford to have another cheesecake. And having two cheesecake? I'm just going to do it today. It's their famous line. Uh, just, I normally don't do I normally do salad. But just today, just today, another cheesecake, another cheesecake, another cheesecake. And you're wondering why they're 50, 60 pounds overweight. Oh, but you don't understand. No, it's an energy issue. Listen, let me explain to you mathematically how I see this. Pat, what does that have to do with business? Everything. Because if you don't have the discipline to take care of the body that you're going to live in for 80 years... What makes me think you're going to have the discipline to take care of me as a customer for three months or six months or 12 months? I did business where I had two people who were buying and selling a house for me. One of the person that was selling a house for me, this person was not in shape at all, probably 100 pounds over their body weight. This other person that was my real estate agent, uh, this person ran five miles a day, worked out four times at the gym. And exact great body shape. This person was 15 years older than this person. This person had kids and grandkids and everything that they were taking care of. This person did not. Watch this. Every single time I called the out of shape person, not one time did they pick up the phone call. Every single time I called this person, they always picked up the phone call. Maybe a phone call like this. Hey, Patrick, I'm uh, something with the under, uh, on the other line with a customer. Can I call you back in 10 minutes? No problem. I could never get this person to pick up the call. It's laziness. It's I'll do it later. It's that mindset. Why? Mathematically, watch this. If this cup, if this cup can only carry 16 ounces, okay, and I try to force myself to put 50 pounds on top of this, what's going to happen with this thing? It's going to get crushed, right? This body of mine is created to carry a certain amount of weight, Anything above, and I've experienced this, my body can carry around 225, 230 pounds. So if I'm at around 240, 245, I'm good. If I hit 255, my body's struggling to carry this 30 pounds. Now imagine some are 150 and they're 240. The body is carrying 90 pounds additional that they can weigh. That's like constantly doing squats and you're walking around all day with additional 90 pounds. Can you truly effectively work for 4, 13 hours? No, you can't. You may effectively work for seven hours. You're yawning at three o'clock in the afternoon. That's success. That's business. That's when the real guys get to work. 
I mean, the real competitors get to work three, four, five. Step when they start early, but they're getting to work three, four, five o'clock. I mean, they're like six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. They put in a kiss time. They're working ten, eleven o'clock. They're putting it's twelve o'clock. They're still working. And boom, five thirty in the morning. They're up. Let's get to work because the body's picking up what it can carry. So I'm not. I'm not trying to tell you this. And believe me, many people on this video are gonna love to share this video with other people because they're afraid to say what I'm saying in this video here. But it's the truth. I've ran a sales organization now since I was uh, 21 years old. And every single time I sat with a guy that was going through this or a gal, and I'd pull him aside and I would tell him, I would say, you know, I love you. You know, I care for you. You know, it's not just business. I want to see you win as well. I looked at your numbers and I'm telling you, every time I watch you get tired too early, you get tired too early, you give up too quick. Somebody on a phone call says, I'm not interested from the first, I'm not interested. You hang up. Every time you go on an appointment, smallest thing happens. You can't wait to come back home. You can't wait. And I said, your weight is an issue. You need to drop around 30 pounds. And I'm telling you right now, you dropping 30 pounds, your income's probably going to go up 50 to 100% next year if you drop this weight. Oh, my Pat, you know, you're so, and typically the reaction is all positive. Pat, you're right, man. You know, I just... I've been promising myself to go out there and get in shape and da, 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 da. So it's not like they're coming from a place and I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. But man, your weight plays a big role. If you're an athlete in sports and you put on 50 pounds, Clippers, Lakers, they're all gonna get rid of you. You ain't gonna play in the NBA for too long. In a world of sales and business, you know who fires you? Not the Lakers, not the Yankees. Your customers fire you every single day by saying no to you. And you don't even know it. It's a turnoff. And it's something you can control. To all my sensitive folks out there that are going to say, shame on you because you don't know what it is to be big bone. I don't know what it is to be big bone. <sighs> Maybe I don't know what it is to be big bone, but I know what it is to not eat pizza. Last time I ate a Big Mac was in 1997, September. How do I know that? Because I finished boot camp. And when I finished boot camp, I went out, I ate a Whopper and a Big Mac, same day I threw up all over the place. So, and I used to work at Burger King, so I've had many Whoppers and many Big Macs. I feel lethargic after I eat a Big Mac. I may eat a slice of pizza or two, maybe once every two months. Because I know I'm now 30 some years old, closing in on 40. When I eat, I feel heavier. My body keeps it now. I used to drop it, but it keeps it now. These are disciplines that you actually can't do something about. And I guarantee you, people want to do business with somebody where the vibration and the energy is high. They feel good about it. They do, and your weight plays a big role in it. So nine things that turn off potential customers. And to, uh, to some of you that had the guts and the courage to watch the entire video here, and some of it is pertaining to you, I applaud you. I don't know you. You don't know me one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe we don't have a relationship. Maybe we do, and this will never come up to you and I. But I want to applaud you. I want to applaud you because it starts off with us wanting to address Areas that are sensitive areas to want to improve in that area. If you didn't like anything I had to say today, you are more than welcome to unsubscribe. Although, although, if you can throw me my pillow, man, I hope you don't because we have a goal. By August 31st, our goal is to get to 100,000 subscribers on Value Team, and I believe our channel is second to none on YouTube. I see a lot of, I see a lot of uh, YouTube channels uh, that's about entrepreneurship. I see many of them that are about entrepreneurship. But it's a lot of motivation. You can do it. You shouldn't do it. You should do this. You should do that. But I don't see a lot that's about how to. This is why I believe we can go pound for pound with any YouTube channel uh, on entrepreneurship. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. If you're one of our loyal fans, loyal followers, please get your friends and peers and other entrepreneurs to subscribe as well. And if you're watching this video on a completely different website they've embedded to, you can always come back to patrickbeddavid.com. Boom. Thank you. And uh, you got questions, comments, comment on the bottom as well. Thanks for watching. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.